Hey, Shalom Israel, Most High Christ, Bless, Captain Get Liar, IUIC, Jackson, Mississippi. And behind me, we are at Hollywood Baptist Church in Fayette, Mississippi. We were invited for their 144th year anniversary for a Black History Month program. Now, although Black History Month has passed, the pastor still gave us an opportunity. Pastor Dr. or Reverend Dr. Elvis Cullenberg, right? He gave us an opportunity to come and to uh, bring the word out. It was great, the people were attentive. We went through Deuteronomy 28, we went through the dark ages, the people were answering questions. It was very interactive, right? So we're thankful to the Most High God for allowing us, brothers, put your boots on, put your black boots on, get your purple shirts, get off your behind, and let's reach out to these churches to try to get in them so we can spread the gospel to our people. Israel united in Christ. We are not a hate group. We are not affiliated with any other Israelite group. Israel united in Christ is a non-violent Bible-based movement. We do not advocate or condone any acts of violence against any race, ethnicity, or gender. We advise that if anyone hears or knows of any plots to cause harm to anyone or to break the laws of the land, you must contact the proper authorities to bring awareness to any possible threat as stated in Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. When you read in Romans chapter 13, it tells us to obey the powers that be, all right? So we're not gonna do anything, we don't teach anything that's against that, if that makes sense. So I want you uh, brothers and sisters, first and foremost, to understand that. Israel United in Christ was started in 2003 by our bishop in New York, Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Kanai, Bishop Yahweh Sapo, our elders, um, as well as uh, seven deacons, five deacons now, and captains and so on and so forth. We do have ranking structure, why? Because black people need order. All right, so this is a biblical depiction of the Garden of Eden. Y'all heard of that before? Second book of the Bible tell you about the Garden of Eden, right? Adam was made and he took the, the woman from his rib and created Eve, right? I want you to look at this picture right here. Can y'all see that picture? Can y'all see this? What color is Adam and Eve? You see them right there? Adam, Adam there, or Eve there, and Adam there. What color are they? Now this is ancient antiquity art. Your ancestors drew these art, art forms during the dark ages, when your people ruled Europe. Now, why in the world would they paint Adam and Eve as being black? Why, because they closer to that time than we are. You realize that? So watch this, Genesis chapter two, verse seven. Come on. The book of Genesis chapter two and verse seven. Watch this. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. I'm from Meridian, Mississippi. <laughs> my, aunts, my, my grandmama and them got a lot of land. And they used to have me out there in that land. And we used to be out there digging, whatever we was doing. And every time I dig into that soil, I said, wait a minute, this soil brown. And the deeper I go into that soil, the darker it get. God made the first man, Adam, from dirt. What color is dirt? Dark. Show me white dirt, you'll never find it. Because the ground, remember at that time, there was no rain. You remember that, right? It was mist on the earth. So it was marshy and muddy. And the Lord said, you know what? I'm gonna make the first creation. I'm gonna put my hand in the ground and pull him up out of him and make him a man. And what color was he? A black man. Right. Which means his wife Eve was a black woman. Right. Which means Cain and Abel were black men, right. which mean Noah was a black man, right. which mean his descendants were black. Because I'm gonna tell you something, and some of you, I know y'all in school, you cannot get black from white, but you can get white from black. I don't see many white people with, bread, with dreadlocks. I see some young men in here right now with dreadlocks, right? Because right? our hair can lock up. In the Bible, it doesn't necessarily mention dreads, it mentions locks, because even a braid, when you look at a braid, what you have to do, mama? You lock it in, right? Samson had that hair. You understand? Black man. Ancient antiquity photo. Look, the unknown catacomb, a unique discovery of early Christian art. Go to the next one. All right, the forefathers. Look at this. Icon of the forefather, Joshua. Joshua, who walked with Moses, right? Watch this, can you read? Go to the next one. Joshua and the captain of the host. Look at this right here. Now, why would we, now, We've been lied to for 400 years in this country. Why would we, as young men, take time out to come and lie to our brothers and sisters anymore? We don't have nothing to gain from this other than the fact that our brothers and sisters know the truth of who they are. That's it. 
to see your eyes be enlightened to know you are the greatest people that ever touched foot on this planet Earth. That's right. And the reason they treat you as second class, because if you ever find out that you're the greatest people to rule this, to be on this planet Earth, God will give it back into your hands like it originally was during the Dark Ages, during the time of King David and King Solomon. Right? Go to the next one. Esau and the angel of the Lord. Look at this. Esau. You ever heard of Esau? Anybody ever heard of him? What color was Esau? Go to, go to Genesis 25. You heard of Esau before in the Bible, right? The word Esau means wasted away is he. That's what Esau means. Meaning what? He wouldn't have melanin like everybody else on the planet Earth. Think about it. If Adam was black and all his descendants were black, then where do white people come from? Because we always ask that question, right? Because every nation on the planet Earth got melanin. Chinese folk got melanin, right? right? Arabs got melanin. You see some Arabs darker than y'all. Right. Very dark skinned. East Indians, very dark skinned, right? It's only one race of people on the planet Earth that does not have melanin to protect their skin from the sun. Mm. Go ahead, Genesis 25, 21, come on. The book Go of back. Genesis, chapter 25 and verse 21. Come on. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. So Rebecca, his wife, couldn't have children, so Isaac went to the Lord and entreated for her. He asked the Lord, let my wife have a child. Come on. Because she was barren. Because she was barren. Come on. And the Lord was entreated of him. And the Lord was entreated of, of Isaac. Go ahead. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And she got pregnant. Go ahead. And the children struggled together within her. Brothers and sisters, pay attention to this. The children inside her stomach were fighting. Fighting from the day, from the That's why they said they struggled together within her. They were throwing blows at each other. Go ahead. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Lord, if this is a blessing, why does my stomach hurt so bad? Read. And she went to inquire of the Lord. Watch this. What, what, what did the Lord say to her? Go ahead. And the Lord said unto her, uh -huh. two nations are in thy womb. What did God just say to her? Two nations. Are that, is that the same race of people? No. These are going to be two separate nations. Remember, the book of Genesis, it, is, it comes from the word Barashoth, which means what? The beginning. Right. Genesis is the beginning of all races on the planet Earth. That's right. So you may say, well, they came from the same woman. Yeah, but they two races. Because God can do that. Can God do that? Can he do what he want to do? Right. Okay, all right. I'm glad y'all with me on that. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto her, Red, two nations are in thy womb. Two races in your womb. Go ahead. And two manner of people shall be separated. From thy bowels. And she said, and he said, when these two children are born, they're gonna be two manner of people. I'm gonna tell you how. One of those people gonna see Michael Brown get shot down and gonna feel hurt. One people gonna see Michael Brown sat down and say, well, what was he doing before that? I need to see the film. Right. Go look at his Facebook page. Look, he got weed on his Facebook page. He deserved to die. Right. They're gonna look at the world in two different ways. Right. That's why he said two manner people. One of them gonna like boneless, skinless, seasonless chicken, and the other one gonna like to put a little uh, Creole with a Tony's Creole on their chicken. Right, right. They gonna be two different people. They gonna laugh at different things. They gonna have a different muscular makeup. One of them gonna have dark skin. One of them gonna be a different color. Watch this. Go ahead. And the one people shall be stronger than the other. You people. already know who the stronger people is, brothers and sisters. That's us. Four hundred years of slavery, picking cotton up and down sixty-one. Where I'm from, picking cotton up down Highway 45, and we still here? The white man credit score dropped five points, and he jumped off the top of the Empire State Building because he ain't never struggled like we struggle. We two different people. Go ahead. And the elder shall serve the young. And in the future kingdom, that oldest child gonna serve that young child. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, and when she about to have the kids, go ahead. Behold. There were twins in her womb. They was twins, but watch this. And the first came out red. Hold up, hold up. Remember that? The Lord said, Moses, make sure you write down something significant about this particular child. He red. He don't look like everybody else on the planet Earth. Go ahead. All over, like in hairy garments. And he gonna be hairy. Now who is born red and hairy? Irish. So say the Irish. Hmm. In the South, we call them red, Help me out now, come on now. They, they come through here with their Confederate flags. I'm not speaking racist, I'm speaking the Bible. They come through here with their Confederate flags, even though that flag actually means they lost, by the way. I, I don't know if y'all know, but the Confederate the South lost. And they still fly that flag to make sure you know that we still have hatred for you deep down inside. We call them redneck in the South. If you smack their neck, it turn red. That's right. 
I smack your neck, you don't turn red, it stay the brown color it originally was, because I can't see your blood through your skin. But I can see their blood through their skin. Why? Because that first child was red. That's why it says Esau. That's why this picture right here, it looked like a European. Why? Because Esau was a white man. Right? Esau is the descendant of the Roman Empire. Right. The Romans are Italians. Right. Italians are who the white man here in America descend from. He descend from the Romans. You understand what I mean? Now, go to the next slide. Come on. Let's move a little quicker. Go ahead. All right. So look, this is Joseph. Now, I want to ask y'all a question. Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers, right? Then he become the viceroy, second man over Egypt, right? His brothers see him face to face and thought he was a black Egyptian. Now, how in the world, if you my brother, because this is my brother right here. If I don't see him for 50 years, I know my brother. I'm not going to say, hey, man, if he was white, by the way, because like they say, the Jewish people are white. If Joseph was white, would his brother say, now, what in the world is this white man doing ruling over a black nation like Egypt? Right. They would have said something. You know why they didn't say nothing? Because he was dark skinned, too. He looked like the Egyptians. Right. Could you give me that in Acts? You know the Apostle Paul? Anybody heard the Apostle Paul before? Y'all heard of Paul, right? I know you have. Romans, Galatians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, that Paul, right? Keep going. Let me show you something. The kings of Israel, these are the different kings. So let me show you something. Give me Paul real quick. Acts 21, 37. Come on. Okay, Acts chapter 21 and verse 37. Listen close. And as Paul was to be led into the castle. As Paul was being led to the captain. Go ahead. He said unto the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? Uh-huh. Who said, Canst thou speak Greek? This white Roman general. Uh, Roman, uh, 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 what they call him, centurion. Right. When he talked to Paul, he said, wait a minute, you speak Greek? Go ahead. Art not thou that Egyptian? Wait a minute. Why would he call Paul an Egyptian? Because we haven't taught our whole lives Paul is a Caucasian. Why would this white man say, ain't you an Egyptian? <laughs> what color was he? He looked like, he looked like Egyptians. He looked like ancient Hermetic nations because the Egyptians come from Ham. Mizraim, right? Come on. Art thou not, art thou that Egyptian? Go ahead. Which before these days made us in uproar uh -huh. and led us out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers? And what did Paul say? But well, Paul said, I am a man which am a Jew. What was Paul? A Jew. What was Paul, brothers and sisters? A Jew. Wait a minute now. We got people in the land right now saying that they Jews and they don't look like no Egyptian. Right. I live there. I played professional basketball. I played in the NBA. I played overseas. When I played overseas in Israel, all my teammates were white Israelis. They didn't look like an Egyptian like Paul. So somebody been lying to us. Somebody is an imposter. That's what the Bible say, right? So now, go to the next image. So you see King David, Asaph, and the chief musician. What color is King David? It's a brown man. The Bible says he was ready, meaning this brother ain't had no bumps on his face. Right. He was smooth. You understand? But he was brown. Right? Put the next one. King David, that's him as he got old. And who this young man right here? His son, King Solomon. You heard of King Solomon? What the Bible say about King Solomon's color? Does it say? Song of Solomon 1 and 5. Come on. The book of the Song of Solomon, chapter 1 and, and verse. This is not a parable by his lover. Read verse 1. Verse 1. The song of songs, which is Solomon. This is Solomon writing this. And what did he say about himself in verse 5? Come on. Verse 5. Yep. I am black. Wait a minute. Whoa. <laughs> I'm offended because I was not taught this. He says what? I am black. King Solomon said I'm black and what? But comely. What does comely mean? Anybody know? Be what'd you say, sir? Beautiful. You ever heard the, I'm black and I'm beautiful? You heard that before? Right. King Solomon originated that term. He said, I'm black and I look good. You understand? So wait a minute, why would the black woman today want to bleach her beautiful black brown skin? I go to Africa all the time, we got churches in Africa. They got something called magic cocoa butter. They take this thick cream, put it on their skin, and in 100 degree weather in Africa, they got on hoodies. Why? Because they have to keep that thing entrapped in heat so it will make their skin lighter. On the blackest continent on the planet Earth, black people are ashamed of their skin. You gotta ask yourself, who put that inferiority complex into our minds to make us think of ourselves less than we did, less than we are? 
when they gave us false images of King David and King Solomon. If black men in Jackson, Mississippi, which is where I live, knew that King Solomon, the greatest king other than Jesus Christ, the wisest king to walk the planet Earth, because Mansa Musa was not the richest, King Solomon is the richest. Man, God says King Solomon was the wisest and richest king. King Solomon said by myself, yeah, and I'm black and beautiful. Now, 5 and 11, what kind of hair did he have? Because a lot of our brothers and sisters are ashamed of their hair. But you should never be ashamed of that beautiful, pure wool that you can do anything with. You can dread it. You can braid it. it can, brothers, we can cut our hair low and it had a wave spinning. Right. What, what can we not do with our hair? Are we going to trade your hair in? For hair that falls to the ground. What's that analogy you always use? Well, uh, like we, we can look at the trees outside. I know we can't see them from here, but which way do the trees grow? Which way do the trees grow? Oh, meaning it's alive. If you had your natural hair, where would it grow? Oh, it's alive. It actually defies gravity. That's the hair that the most I give you. Hair that defies gravity. That's special. And that's what he said about us. Hey, did he not say that I'm the God of the living? That's right. And not the dead? Right. Ain't nothing God put on your body that's dead. You understand that? Ain't nothing God put on this earth that starts dead. You can't get life from, you can't get life from death, but you can't get death from life. Unless we're talking about the resurrection, that's a different thing. Right? Read that for me. 5 and 11. Song of Solomon, chapter next 5 and verse 11. His head is as the most fine gold. So King Solomon's head was as the most fine gold. What else? His locks. What did King Solomon have? His locks. His locks, meaning his braids, his long braids that he had, read. Are bushy. Are bushy. What is bushy? That's nappy, kinky. That's what they call nappy, kinky, curly. That's your hair. This is what King Solomon had in his head. You understand? This is natural. This is natural for us. We great. But we look at each other with hatred. Why? Because, and you know, I heard Pastor mention about Ukraine, right? And he 100% he on point. But you know why I don't, you know why me and my brothers don't pray for Ukraine? Because they keeping our brothers in the war zone. Black men, just like Pastor said, are trying to get on, get on buses, get on trains to get out of the way of nuclear destruction, bombs coming from Russia. And the white man said, uh-uh, my dog get on first. Right. That sound like 1960 in Selma, Alabama. That sound like 1955 in Jackson, Mississippi. Right. Yeah. Or Money, Mississippi, where they killed our brother Emmett Till. Right. right. And oh, Carolyn Bryant, by the way, she's still alive. And they just dropped all the charges in December 2021. Guess what happened during that time? NFL, NBA. We don't be watching the news. Like Pastor said, we don't watch the news. We don't know Carolyn Bryant, the lady that, that admitted that she lied about uh, Emmett Till. All the charges just got dropped in December last year. That's how they always do with us, right? <laughs> now, go to the next one. That's the uh, Battle of Gilead, uh, David and Goliath, all black, as you can see. Go to the next one. The prophets. Now, look at this right here. This is the prophet Moses. Anybody ever heard of Moses? When Moses was born, what did he become? Who knows? He became the Pharaoh's grandson. Now, say Moses was white, like the so-called Israelis today. Would the Pharaoh not know that he wasn't his grandson? Here it is, I'm the, I'm the king of all black people. Right. right. And on my knee is a little white boy. And you gonna convince me that this my grandson? Come on, man, we gotta stop you. We gotta stop using logic. Right. Moses was a black man. That's right. You got that for me? Get to him. Let also with bring it out. Okay. Verse four. Give me, um, Exodus 4 and 6. Watch this. I'm praising. I, um, I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of mess up your comfortability a little bit, if that's okay. We, we like to be comfortable, but today we're going to mess that up a little bit, okay? Read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 4 and verse 6. Uh -huh. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. So what the Lord was showing Moses was he wanted Moses to put his hand inside his bosom because he finna show him a miracle. Keep reading. And he put his hand into his bosom. Uh -huh. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous. It was what? Leprous. Read. As snow. As mm. snow. What color snow? So when he put his hand out, what color it became? Keep reading. And he said, put thine hand into thy bosom again. Uh huh. And he put his hand into his bosom again. Right. And plucked it out of his bosom. Uh huh. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. What color was he now? So his original color was what? So what color was Moses? What color was the Egyptians? That's right. All right. So we, we termed that the Egyptian world. Brown, dark-skinned people, 
Moses was also. That's what he was bringing out about him being in Pharaoh's house and not good took him for somebody else because he, they was both dark. Two different nations, but they were dark. Right. Read this. Matthew chapter 2 and verse 13. Uh -huh. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. So this is talking about Christ's daddy Joseph. Read. In a dream. Uh -huh. Saying, arise and take the young child and his mother uh -huh. and flee into Egypt. Where they were going? So if Christ had been a very light-skinned man, all white, Caucasian. Caucasian, how would he be able to hide in Egypt where it's very dark? He'd stick out like a soul thumb, wouldn't he? He would not be able to hide there. Are y'all able to grab that? And this is the scripture that we're reading out of. So with that being said, what did Christ look like? What did you say? Speak to the church. What color was Christ? That's what Christ was. He was a black man. Go on to the scripture. So we got a church in Uganda that's East Africa. We went out there to visit these brothers and sisters, right? And as we out teaching, it's nothing but black people. I'm talking about 99.99999 black people. And this white man walked through the crowd. And we all noticed it. Like, oh, man, they go white dude. Right. <laughs> what is he doing here in East Africa? Because, so I'm showing you that Christ would have stood out like a sore thumb. Right. He would have not been able to hide amongst the Egyptians. The Romans would have came and found him very easily because he'd have been the only white man in Egypt. Right? Now, the prophet Jeremiah, you heard of him, right? Watch what Jeremiah said about the Jews. Give me that Jeremiah 14 too. Remember we read earlier that in Genesis 2 and 7 that the first man Adam was made from where? Dirt. Dirt. Watch this, Jeremiah 14, too. Come on. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 14, and verse 2. Judah mourneth, mm. and the gates thereof languish. Read. They are black unto the ground. What did he say about the Jews? They are black unto the ground. Church, what did he say about the Jews? They black unto the ground. How many times we got to read black in the Bible for our people to understand it? You know why? That's why they try to say, hey, read the NIV. Revelation, read. chapter 1, and verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So this is John Baptist, the John the Baptist preaching, the source is Peter Walters illuminated manuscript, 16th century, Moscow, Russia. Moscow, Russia, in Russia, they got black pictures of God and his son and John the Baptist baptizing the people in Jordan. Right. In Russia. What you got? Read. Verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So Jesus Christ had white woolly hair. Woolly hair. Woolly hair. That's the same thing we read earlier about King Solomon, who was his what? Ancestor. Right. King Solomon had woolly hair. Right? Jesus Christ. You got another image? Go to the next image for me. Jesus Christ had woolly hair. Look at this. Christ the Savior. Look at the source. Cathedral of the uh, Annunciation. Uh, Moscow Kremlin, 14th century Moscow, Russia. Moscow, Russia. Vladimir Putin, who bombing Ukraine right now, he got black kids to Jesus walking around his house. Think about that. I've been to Russia. Like I told you, I play sports. I've been to Russia. It ain't nothing but white people in Russia. Snow and big tall hats everywhere. You understand? But they got black pictures of your ancestors. You got to ask yourself, what they do to us here? That's why the Bible called this place Babylon the Great. It's the land of confusion. They confuse us here. Now, watch this. Keep reading. His head and his hands were white like wool. Next image. As white as snow. Uh huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Go back, go back. They say his eyes are a flame of fire. Church, anybody know the prophecy about Jesus Christ? What did they call Christ? A man gluttonous and a wine bibber. His first miracle, he turned water into. So he didn't drink none. The man said, Y'all done held the good wine to now. Right. Usually you put the good wine out later. Y'all <laughs> put the good wine out first. Y'all didn't have the good wine out till now. Why? Because Christ made that wine, that water made a good wine. The best that they had at that feast. That was his first miracle. It's not a sin to drink, but it's a sin to get drunk. An alcoholic, that's sin. We understand that, right? We all understand that. We can't be sloppy drunk out here in these streets. The Bible says be sober because your adversary, the devil, what? As a roaring lion. Right. So we got to be sober. But Christ drank wine in moderation. And the prophecy is in Genesis chapter 49, verse 12. Could you read that? Yes, sir. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. This is prophetic of Jesus coming from the line of Judah. Read. His eyes shall be red with wine. Jesus Christ's eyes is what, brothers and sisters? Red with wine. Talking about the whites of his eyes. That's why when John saw him, he said, you know what? His, his eyes are like flames of fire. 
because they was red with wine. Go back to Genesis. Let's finish it out. I mean, uh, Revelation, finish it out. Go ahead. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 15. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burn in a furnace. So now the prophet John is looking down at Jesus Christ's feet. Like some of you just like to have your toes out, right? He looking down at his feet, because back then they wore sandals. And he said, his feet look like fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Now, what color is brass? It's a derivative of brown. If you ever played in a band, you have a section called the brass section. Right. Right? And if I were to take those instruments and throw them in fire, what would happen to those instruments? What color would they become? Very dark. No, Jesus wasn't just brown. He was black. The Bible said he was very dark skinned. Christ was Wesley Snipes black. Dark, dark skinned. But guess what? In America, they say, no. Don't show them that. Don't tell them that. Because they might be uplifted by it. They might love their skin. They might stop buying our skin treatment right, products. Right, right. You understand? So that's why he said, you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now I got one more thing, and then we're going to close it out. Go to Deuteronomy 28. Thank you so much, Pastor, for allowing us to speak. Go to Deuteronomy 28. So Deuteronomy 28 chapter is the basis of the Bible. It's where you learn about what happened to, the, to God's chosen people. God has a chosen people. We all understand that, right? The Israelites are God's chosen people, right? What happened to the Israelites for being disobedient to God? He punished them, right, sis? And what did God put on them? Because Pastor was, well, it was the other reverend. I, I didn't get a chance to meet him. He was speaking in his prayer about our oppression and our depression. We are depressed people. Come on, right. look at us. We downtrodden. Some of us live in check to check. Some of us got negative in the account right now. Struggling. We going through it. Right? So the Bible tells us why that happened. Go to the first slide. All right. So go to the next one. Watch this. So Deuteronomy 28, 15. I want it on the screen so you can see. Can we read that? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Moses speaking to the Israelites on this side of Jordan. Go ahead. But it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. You don't listen to God. Read. To observe to do all his commandments. And you don't keep God's commandments. Read. And his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day. Read. That all these curses. That all these what? Curses. What? Curses. The Bible said curses. Read. Shall come upon thee uh -huh. and overtake thee. I'm going to show you something you can relate to. Go to the next verse, verse 16. Say, Cursed in the city. In 1921, we had something called Tulsa, Oklahoma Massacre. We called it Black Wall Street. Guess right. what? That wasn't even the first one. The first one was in North Mississippi, uh, Mount Bayou. Right. The first Black Wall Street was in your home state, if you're from Mississippi like I am, right? The first Black Wall Street was here. Look at that. What did they do? They said a black man was on an um, elevator with a white woman, and he apparently tried to rape her. During 1921 when they was hanging us from trees? You know during this time they called that Red Summer. Right. Look up the history. Red Summer, 1921 and 1922, they was killing, they were destroying all black communities. That's what they did. So God said, guess what? You're going to build up your black Wall Street, but I'm not going to let it prosper. Why? Because you broke my commandments. We broke God's commandments. We sinned against God. Look at our communities. We sin against God every day, and that's why we destroy it. Lake Lanier, you ever heard of Lake Lanier? There's a lake in Georgia called Lake Lanier. There was a black town there. The white man went in and killed all the black people and then put a lake over it. Now it's the biggest tourist attraction in that part of Georgia. So up under the soil of that lake, where white people go and have fun and take their kids and put on their bathing suits and go swim and jump off the diving board and hit backflips, there's the, the bones of your ancestors right up under that lake. Right. We ain't got a lot of you. This is what the Bible says. God told us, break my commandments, I got something for you. We know God can be vengeful. We understand that, yeah, he's merciful. He's being merciful to us right now. That's why we're still alive. That's why we ain't dead yet. We still here. But while we living here, as long as we disobedient, this is what we go through. Look at Jackson, Mississippi. Murder rate at the top. Jackson, Mississippi, you know how small Jackson is? Jackson number one in murder right now. More than Chicago. More than Baton Rouge, more than New Orleans, more than cities 18 times bigger than it. Why? Because the people of God live in Jackson and they're being disobedient. So God said, I'm going to let your cities be jacked up. Jackson got a black man. We always think, put a black man in politics, it's going to get better. <laughs> All right. Watch this, read. The next one, go ahead. And Look, cursed. What is that? Watch it, read that. And cursed shall thou be in the field. Who picked cotton all throughout Mississippi? Oh, okay. So we ain't lying in. The Bible said, curse you gonna be in the field. Look at that little baby right there. You old enough to walk? You old enough to carry that sack. 
And remember, they tell you come put that sack on that weight scale. And if that scale was down, they'll whoop that little boy. They ain't care how young you was. And look, look, look at the mothers. Look at the mothers, how they had to crowd over the children. You know why black men, the black women so extra protective of their black sons now? Because the same thing that used to happen in the field, where Massa would punish him if he got out of line, same thing happened in the streets today if right. he get pulled over by the police and try to grab his wallet too quick. You fear for your son's life now, just like they feared for their son's life then. Right or wrong, we ain't lying. Right or wrong. When our brothers leave the house, when your husband leave the house, when your son leave the house, you tell them what? Be careful. If they pull you over, don't look no sudden moves. <laughs> you know white boys get out the car. I'm gonna, I got something I gotta say. Let me out. They get out the car on the police officer. He back up. No, not with us. We run away and he shoot us in the back. Why? Because God told us, I'm gonna put a spirit on them. They my sword. I'm gonna use them to punish you for evil. That's Romans 13. We all know that scripture. But we never ask, put the two and two together to see why we suffer like we suffer. Watch this. So we was in the cotton fields, y'all. That happened to us. We made America great. When they say make America great again, that means put them back in the field. Right. Why? Because the white man in, in here in uh, Mississippi, he say things like, I got old money. What do you mean by that? What does old money mean? What that mean? <laughs> I got money from when y'all was in slavery. One of the biggest cotton producers is Greenwood, Mississippi. They call it the cotton capital of the world. All right. We don't have to lie to you. We love you. Why would we lie? Go to the next one. Uh, Red Summer, 1919. I mentioned that earlier. That's when they murdered and slaughtered us. Detroit destroyed summer, 1967. Some of y'all were born then. Because we always say, oh, slavery was a long time ago. <laughs> 1967 wasn't a long time ago. Right. That was one generation. Because my grandmother, she 86. Right? So she was born in the early, well, no, she's 81. She was born in the early 40s. So she lived during this time. She was a grown woman, 26 years old, in college during this time. So that ain't a long time ago. My grandma was living during that time. That's a generation above mine, right? Or two generations, right? Watch this. Go to 32 real quick, because we ain't got much time. Go to 32. Watch this, y'all. Oh, go back, go back, go back. Anybody know this man? Go back. You know who that is? Ahmaud Arbery. Y'all don't know him, right? You know what that is? I believe that's Philando Castile. You know what that is? I know y'all know who that is. They still getting uh, Snickers, I mean, what are they, uh, Skittles. Yeah, Skittles. They still got George Zimmerman signing Skittles bags. White people go to him and say, would you sign my Skittles bag? That's the ultimate disrespect to a mother that lost her child. But they put that rape blatantly in your face and God says, because I love you, I'm going to punish you just like you punish your child. Because the scripture said, uh, the Lord loveth whom he chastened. He chastising us. This chastisement. How else could this go on? We done voted, we done marched, we done assembled, we done did civil rights, right. and it's still happening? It's got to be divine intervention. It's some God want black people to see. Y'all know who they said y'all were. Right. You my chosen people. You right. better come back to me. I'm going to continue to put my belt on your behind. Right? So now, go. Go to 28, 32 real quick. Like I said, we got much time. I got three more slides. Uh, 32. You ready? You ready? Come on. Yes, sir. Hold on. Let me get it first. Uh, oh, man, I got to go to this. This is going to touch our sister's soul. I'm sorry. I, can I get this? Go to verse 30, bro. I'm sorry. Go to verse 30. I want you to read verse 30 before we show the slide. Read that. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 30. Watch this, y'all. Thou shalt betroth the wife. You're going to betroth the wife, meaning this your woman. Nobody else's. She yours. Go ahead. And another man shall lie with her. When that happened? When that happened? Go to the next slide. Is that not your woman? This not your wife? And then Master says she showed a little good in that dress. Right. Matter of fact, uh, fix her up for me and bring her to my room tonight. No, matter of fact, all my cousins in town and we're going to get drunk. And they saw your wife. Wait, 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 give me a brother. They saw your wife at the dinner table serving. And they said, you know what? That's a good one right there. Send her to my room. And they come and tell us, just like on, uh, what was the name of that movie? Birth of a Nation. Remember they came and got Gabrielle Union from the cabin that night? Right. And her husband was mad. So now, think about this. The slave master rapes your wife and sends her back to you, right? And you go, it's going to be all right, baby. Is she going to let you console her? She going to say, you can stand up for me and stop him from doing what he just did to me. Right. So you wonder why the black woman don't feel protected by black men in these last days. That's a spiritual thing. It's deep down and rooted from what happened in slavery. Because it's the same thing. Right? Now, go to the next one. Let 
Look at that, adultery, look at that. Uh, what, they, what they call it? Go back, go back. What they say? What, what, what was this called? Entanglement. Uh, entanglement. Come on, man. You want to trot the wife and a little young brother, half your age gonna have it. Adultery run rampant in our community. It is what it is. I know black folks don't like to talk about it because many black folks love to cheat. But God, I'm just, y'all laugh because you know it's true. God says, you think that you're just going to run scot-free in this country and do evil? God said, no, nah, I got something for you. You're going to betroth the wife, and another man going to lay with her. Go. 28, 32. Come on. Verse 32. Come on. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Your sons and daughters are going to be taken from you in slavery, and they're going to be sold to another race. That happened downtown Jackson. You know how you go to these little country towns in Mississippi? Y'all are from Mississippi, right? You go to the, the next town, right? What's a, what are the streets like downtown? They usually what? Brick. You know why? That let the slaves know when they heard them horses galloping on that brick, what they knew. Somebody getting sold today. Right. That's what the Bible says. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Go ahead. And thine eyes shall look. And you're going to watch them take your child, I read. And fail with longing for them all the day long. And you're going to cry all day. Go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine hand. What does it mean, no might in our hand? Did we have a might to go get our children back when they took them from Philadelphia, Mississippi and brought them all the way down here to Fayette? You know how far that is? Do you know how far that is on foot? And you ain't never left the plantation, so you don't know which way up, which way left, which, okay, west, I don't know no directions. I, I barely speak English. Master didn't teach me English. So when they took your son galloping off and you saw him leaving as he was sold, could you do anything? Wait a minute. They do that to your sons today when they mass incarcerate them. And they got a, they, they name ain't Johnny no more. Their name is 357-984721. And they wear an orange jumpsuit. And you see them often as you pass it down the road and you see them out there uh, uh, putting petunias or putting some type of flower in, in the white mayor's uh, garden or on the side of the road cutting grass. Right or wrong? Who in jail more than us? Ain't nobody in jail more than us. You know, America's supposed to be the home of the free, right? America got more prisoners than any country on the planet Earth. That's right. Now, how in the world a land of the free got most prisoners than anybody else? And you know what those prisoners do? Make clothes, socks, um, um, license plates, IDs, plastic cups. The things you buy at the Dollar General likely were made by one of your brothers or family members that's in one of these jails around here. Don't that sound like slavery? Well, I can make you make something for me for free and they got to pay you Jack Dilly's what? That's slavery. God told us it would happen. Go to the next slide. Look at this. Look, these little babies right here. Now, some of y'all, you love your children. I love my children. I got three daughters. And I would be destroyed if they took my baby from me. And that's exactly what they did during that time. Look at this over here. The two cars, they vest up featuring slave children. Look at that. They would make the slave children take pictures. When they would come, like me, when I played sports, they made me take my shirt off, take my pants off, and just have them on tights and stand up there. And the white man come with a little clip, and he pinch your chest. He said, oh, you 6% body fat, you 1% body fat, you 6 foot 8, you 220 pounds. Let me see your wingspan. How long are you? How high you jump? Go touch that vertical leap up there. How fast you run? Run the 40-yard dash for me, boy. Same thing. It's just now we make money. But then, we so messed up in the mind, what we do with the money? Go get a white girl. <laughs> Go spend our money on stuff we can't afford. Right. We don't think, I got $5 million now. I'm only going to make five more million. Right. But I ain't number 26. I got possibly 50 more years to live. And what we do with that money? Splurge, take care of our homeboy, go to the club, go to the strip club, do stupid stuff with the money. So we still slaves. Because our mind ain't changed. Right, right. Now, verse 48, come on. I got two more. This one and 68. Verse 48. Verse 48. Oh, wait, hold on, wait, 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 wait. I saw something that sparked my interest. Go back. Look at this. Look at this, go back. Go back. Look at this right here. Oh, oh, oh. Some of y'all like this music. The black woman ain't nothing more than having her tongue out and showing her butt cheeks. She ain't better than that. The princesses that was ruling Europe, they ain't better than that. Yeah. This is what we become. This is what our young men become. Look at this brother's pants. Come on, why would you want to ever? You know, in prison, you know what that mean, right? Yeah. What that mean in prison, bro? Yeah, you're available. I'm available. available. Right. Come check for me. Now the, now the black man wear it on the outside of prison, not knowing it's derogatory. Ain't sagging nigger backwards? That's exactly oh, okay. what it is. 
This is what we become, y'all. God said we better than this. We royalty. And we idolize this because of the trap beat that's on it and the filth that they're rapping about. Pastor mentioned it early, right? Go back. 37, read it. Come on. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. So now we're an astonishment. We put 28 inch rims on a Chevy Malibu. <laughs> that's what we do. We take care of all our homeboys. And them dudes ain't never did nothing for us. They never had our best interests at heart. But we do that type of stuff. Right? Go ahead. A proverb. A proverb is color people time. You heard that before? They always late. They love chicken and watermelon. They men don't take care of their kids. Right. They women loud mouth. Is that not the stereotype or the caricature of black folks in the community? Okay. And on television? Because on all Tyler Perry movies, I know some of y'all watch that filth, but that's a grown 6'5 man dressed up like a woman. And he give the worst advice ever. Uh -oh. That's why he makes stuff like, I can do bad all by myself. Diary of a mad black woman. He praying on your ignorance of who your kings are. That's what he doing. Make millions. I know it hurt. I know it hurt. Give me all that. Go ahead. And a byword. Byword means anything outside your God-given nationality. God call you the Israelites. The white men say, no, you're African American. But guess what? If you was born before 1987, that wasn't your, that ain't on your birth certificate. Your birth certificate possibly say color, or Negro, or black. Now here it is, your son born, you born in 1961, it say Negro. Your son born in 1990, he'll say uh, uh, African American. But he came from you. How y'all got two different races? God said that would happen. We will become a byword among all nations where the Lord shall lead thee. They call us the N-word in different languages. Go to Russia, I've been to Russia. When you when you on the free throw line shooting, they calling you N I G G E R or N I G G A, right? Right? In a different language that you don't understand. And I asked my teammate, what they say? Oh, they calling you nigga. Right. Dang, that's crazy. Go to verse forty-eight. Come on now. Verse forty-eight. Forty-eight. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies. So watch this. Go back. You move too fast for me. So down. The Bible says, therefore, shall well, three forty-seven. Verse forty-seven. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, but the abundance of all so things. We weren't happy to keep God's commandments. Watch what happened. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. He said, okay then, well since you didn't want to serve me, I'm going to make you serve your enemies. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee. And I'm going to make sure they know where you at in Africa trying to hide. Go ahead. In hunger. In hunger. So when you're hungry, who you go to? Come on, just be honest. Some of us got crops, but we can't produce no Sam's Club. We can't produce no whole foods with our crops. It's enough to pay for us. Maybe take care of a couple of us. The Bible says you go to them in hunger, read. And in thirst. Aquafina, uh, Gatorade, whatever you want. Whatever you want to drink, if you like a little taste, you still got to go to them. It don't matter, read. And in nakedness. If you pull the clothes out your back right now and look at the tag, I bet you it say made in Taiwan, made in China, made in Japan, made in Italy. It don't never say made by you. Go ahead. And in one of all things. And in one of all things. That's your education. Uh, uh, tissue. Toilet paper. Remember during the pandemic when it first hit? Ain't nobody had no tissue. And you say, what tissue? What's that? Right. Why is that the most important commodity? That proved to us we have to go to our enemies in everything we want. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Look. Snap. Go back. We said go to our enemies at home. Go back. Snap. Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Now, white people are on government assistance too. And I've been on government assistance in my life, right? So I'm not making fun of anybody that's on that because I know we have tough times. But what I'm showing you is we can't even fully take care of ourselves. We have to go to our enemies that we know hate our guts when we want to eat. In fact, if you want wit, which means women, women, infant, children, by the way, but she didn't get that child without that man. Right. Just saying. Women, infant, children. What a man is. Why the man always got to leave the house? When the, when the social worker come over, he got to leave. Right. Why? Because they find out he living there, they say, you know, you're supposed to be taking care of her. Right. We cutting all her assistance off. Right. Pay your rent now. Pay your hood, take your hood off. That's to make us dependent. God said, look, you, you disobey me, you don't go to your enemies when you're hungry, when you're thirsty, the yarn, the fabric, the cotton that you used to pick. You got to go to your enemies for it. Go ahead. And it said, and one of all things, your social security number. What do I need that for anyway? I'm still trying to figure that one out. Hmm. What do I need this for? Right? 
But the Bible says we would have to go to our enemy. Look, a certificate of birth. So here it is. I'm seeing my baby born, bought my first child, Sanaya. I'm looking at her born right here in my hand. And the white man said, well, no, she's not technically a child until I sign the birth certificate. Right. You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? That's a curse. That ain't no blessing. That's a curse when you have to document that your child alive. And if you don't document it, that child ain't alive. Or if the father ain't there to sign the birth certificate, they say, you ain't a daddy. What? Come on. Medicine, education. And now watch that bottom part. What the bottom part say? Come on, read it again. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Brothers and sisters, do we have yokes of iron on our neck? These are real pictures. This is artistry. That's artistry. These are real pictures of real slaves with yokes of iron on their neck. Now, how you gonna run off the plantation with that? Think about how heavy that is. Now, I said that brother, maybe, you know, black don't crack. He could be 75 and look good like that. You understand? But he got a yoke of iron on his neck. He can't move. God said this. This ain't us. Oh, what, oh, what are you reading? Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48. Is that the Bible you're reading? Yes, sir. This the holy Bible we read. They got your history documented in it to the T. Because God don't make no mistake. He's not a man that he should lie. God said he's going to do it. Brothers and sisters, he fulfilled his word. That's what happened to us. Last slide, verse 64, 60, well, 68. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Yep. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. This is going to take the cake. Go ahead. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. How do you get to America? How? Faith ain't that far. Where we at? We ain't that far from Natchez, right? Right. Natchez is the second largest slave port in the United States of America. They brought more slaves up the Mississippi River, dropped them off in Natchez, and then marched them up to Natchez under the hill, to the forks in the road. Y'all been there before, right? You remember the movie Life? He said, that there, Natchez under the hill. Right. They were making fun of us, because we used to be sold as slaves, Natchez under the hill. That's right. They make fun of us in these movies. We don't know it because we don't learn history. Now, the Bible says, you don't go into slavery again, because that's what Egypt means. Could you give me what Egypt means? Yes, sir. Because somebody may say, well, that's Egypt, brother. Listen, you don't need no ship to go from Egypt to America, I mean Egypt to uh, Israel. You don't need that. You can walk back then. Remember they walked into the land? They ain't need no ship. Read what you got. Exodus chapter 20 and verse two. Go ahead. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt? Out of the house of bondage. What did that say? Out of the house of bondage. So what does Egypt mean in this context? House of bondage. Egypt means slavery. When God said, read it again, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Bible says the Lord is going to bring us into Egypt again, but this time it was going to be on what? With ships. It was going to be on slave ships. Is that not your history? Hmm. Everything we've been reading happened to you. And it ain't just our colorful pictures that we got. This is real life stuff. This is our history. This is black history in the Bible. Show me the image so they can see it for themselves. Look at that. Was that not your ancestors? You know that those ships weren't made for humans, right? They were made for rice, right? Made for rubble, things of that nature. Cargo, like you see them big ships that's outside of the uh, of uh, Florida and California today, just sitting there, can't get into the country. Those are the ships that you was on the bottom of. And look, to get us, to get as many as of us over here as possible, that's how they would stack us. Now imagine being down there like that for a year and a half, because it took a year and a half to get from the west coast of Africa to America on the ship. Imagine being down there tossed to and fro, people vomiting, because some people get seasick. They vomiting, right. the woman on her menstrual, she may be pregnant, the brothers using the bathroom, and they were locked in chains like this or with each other. Matt, they said in Ghana they have the point of no return. You go into the slave tower, uh, and, uh, I'm going to say it wrong. They said the feces was taller than me. You know why? Because they weren't taking you to no bathroom or no bathroom break. You was down there and change, just go where you at. Right. Just use the bathroom where you at. Just throw the slop down there and let the slave eat it. That happened to us because we got a God in heaven that loves us and he punished us for our disobedience. When you read throughout the Bible, it's not the Israelites rebellious. Right. Okay. When you read the Bible, the Israelites were rebellious over and over and over and over. You can't tell me that ain't us today. Because right. guess what we is? Rebellious. 
We say something, hey, brother, you know, you can't, you can't eat that because the Bible says, oh, no, brother. We rebellious. We do not like to listen to instruction. The same, remember, the pastor said it earlier, ain't no new thing under the sun. That which was is that which shall be. That's us right now, walking the earth right now, doing the same thing our ancestors did, but we can't even see. We broke God's commandment. Now God got his belt right on our behind every single day, and that's why we oppressed. He said he's going to send us into slavery with ships. Go ahead. Look at that. By the way we're up, I spake unto thee. Just like I told Moses it was going to happen, it happened. Just like this. I told Moses way back then that it was going to happen. Y'all didn't believe me. And in 1619, I made sure I confirmed it because that's God. Because he ain't going to lie. Go ahead. Thou shalt see it no more again. You're not going to see your homeland again. None of us have been back to Jerusalem as a nation. Come on. And there. And there. When you touch down in America, when you touch down in Natchez, Mississippi, or New Orleans, Louisiana, or Jamestown, Virginia, read. You shall be sold. When you got off the ship, what did they do to you? Did they give you a break? They say, look, man, uh, we're going to give y'all some per diem. So y'all going to get something to eat. We're going to put y'all up in a real nice hotel. And then y'all come back out tomorrow morning and we're going we gonna, to you know, do our thing. We're going to put y'all to work. No, as soon as you got off that a year and a half boat ride, they marched you up the hill and sold you to their brothers. Go ahead. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. And there, go back. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. That's what we read earlier about sons and daughters given to another people. That's what we read earlier. That's God confirming what he did to us. That's why when you read in Acts 319, it says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. When the time of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. When Christ come back, like the like pastor mentioned by nuclear destruction, that's what the Bible mentions. There's nothing on the planet Earth today that can cause a fire to the, uh, the magnitude of what the Bible calls the lake of fire. Only thing on Earth that can do that is nuclear weapons. Vladimir Putin got a bomb called Satan 2. Now, why do you think he named it that? Because he know he's going to use it. America got 6,992 bombs. <laughs> your tax money going to buy bombs, make, make bombs that you think that they ain't going to never use? <laughs> you ain't read your Bible. The scripture said the Lord will come out like it's a thief in the night and all the elements shall be burnt with fervent heat. That's nuclear destruction. God trying to call us in these last days to save us. Right. And this is it. Knowing who you are and repentance. We teach the same thing. Jesus Christ is king. He died to, 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 for the sins of the nation of Israel. And he's going to redeem us from the hands of our oppressors that have oppressed us and continue to oppress us today. But we must humble ourselves as a little child to see the kingdom of God. That's right. We got to be retaught. That's what the scriptures say. You understand? Y'all brothers and sisters understand that? You have something you want to close out with? No, sir. No, sir. You sure? No, sir. Okay. Well, well, go ahead. Let's give me one scripture. I'll go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Uh -huh. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So you notice the Bible said we was going to serve our who? Enemies. Did it say our friends? Enemies. I didn't write that. The Bible said we was going to serve our enemies. Keep reading. Which the Lord shall send against thee. God sent these enemies against us. Read. In hunger. And you notice it, it didn't say enemy. It said enemies. That means it's more than one, right? Keep reading. In hunger. Uh -huh. And in thirst. Uh -huh. And in nakedness. Uh -huh. And in one of all things. Uh -huh. So in one of all things. You want an education? Uh, we talked about a birth certificate. If you, if somebody died, God forbid somebody died. Guess who you got to go to to get a death certificate before you can put that person in the ground? Who? Who? The government, right? Who runs the government? The enemy. The enemy. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So that yoke of iron got upon our neck Un until until 1865. Who knows what happened during that time? The emancipation. That happened. The yokes came off, did it? Read. Until uh -huh. he have destroyed these. So when them yokes came off, we was mentally, physically destroyed as a people. All right. So destroyed that on Easter Sunday, guess when we get our kids up and dress them up, and guess what they hunt for? Rabbit eggs. Mm. Rabbit don't even lay eggs. Why do we have our kids um, hunt rabbit eggs? That's how destroyed we are as a people. We so destroyed that on December the 25th, we'll put a tree from outside our house and bring it inside our house mm -hmm. and wait for some fat white man to come down a chimney and not, and not, we don't even have chimneys nowadays to bring presents to us. That's how destroyed we will be. And we know this ain't right, but we so destroyed we just keep that tradition going on and on and on and on and on. It's tradition. Matthew 15, 3, real fast. That's my last scripture. Yes, sir. Then we close out with this pastor. Thank you so much. Matthew 15, 3.
The book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 3. Uh -huh. But he answered and said unto them, why do you also transgress the commandment of God? So why do we transgress the commandment of God? By what? By your tradition. By our traditions. Y'all understand that? Y'all got it? All right. All praises. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Pastor. Thank you so much for the opportunity, Church. I know this is a big day for you all, your 144th anniversary. We're thankful. We appreciate the Black History Moment. We do have another engagement. We have to be at it, too. We got an hour and a half drive. But we're very, very thankful. We pray that this was enlightening to you. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. Um, any more questions about black history in the Bible. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.